Welcome, everybody, to another exhilarating and knowledgeable episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Today, we're going to be reacting to a clip from the hit TV show 60 Days In on A&E. Every time I say that, it gives me a little giggle inside. I don't know why. Maybe because it feels like I'm actually working for A&E. But I'm definitely not, so let's not get that idea cooking in your mind. But today's topic, believe it or not, is about fighting. Fighting behind bars, believe it or not, sometimes people can end up fighting and looking like a snitch at the end. Or some people, the way they handle their situations, look very weak. Word spreads, and next thing you know, you're getting taken advantage by everybody. So, pay close attention if you happen to be going to lockup. I'm going to break down the proper way to handle these disputes. At least from what I've seen doing time going to prison two times in my life, unfortunately. So let's get right into it, ladies and gentlemen. If you're new to the channel and enjoy, hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave. And check out my playlist with many more videos for you to start watching today. Now, before I press play, let's break down some of the key players in this clip. We got Ryan. He happens to be a participant of the program. For those of y'all that don't know nothing about the show, it's about participants going in undercover to try to gather information on what's going wrong inside the cell block. And at the end, when it's all said and done, whether they're tapping out early or making it the whole 60 days in, it doesn't matter. They're gonna go to the sheriff and give them this intel from what they have seen, you know, when it comes down to contraband, fights, whatever. Things that these sheriffs and deputies can't get on their own because they're not an inmate, obviously. But for most of these participants, like a lot of you already know, it just turns into a game of survival trying to make sure they don't get beat up, you know? And by doing that, they just ain't even thinking about gathering intel no more, you know? They don't, They just don't want their teeth pushed back or their nose broke. Anyways, Mr. Ryan here is gonna be in a cell with a guy named Garza. Garza's gonna have a dispute with a guy named Trey Sean. And that's what the whole clip's about. So let's get into it. I'm gonna break it down as we go. And keep in mind, you know, my interpretation of what to do in these type of situations might not be the same as the next man. All right, so it says Ryan has been in jail for over a week. Keep in mind, Ryan's a participant, and M.A. Garza has recently invited him to move into his cell on the upper level, or top tier. And this is actually pretty important, so let me break it down really quick. In some jails, just because a bunk opens up inside the cell doesn't mean that you're going to be the one that gets it. Some places, some people got to sleep on that floor for a very long time until someone lets them in. Some facilities might have something in place where these guys will get the bunk, regardless if the people in the cell want them in there or not. But chances are, usually, uh, when, a, when a bunk opens up in a cell in jail, the people that's in the cell already is going to try to get someone in there that they're going to be able to live with. But Garza became pretty close with Ryan just within a week of him being in jail. And that's how it happens. You know, when you first get in there, a lot of people come up to you. You know, some people try and take advantage and some people just trying to be friends. That's up to you to try to figure out. You know, that's a different topic for a different day. But Ryan made his way into the cell with Garza. I guess he trusts him enough to live with him. And Ryan's about to have a crash course on what it's really like to live in jail, especially when there's disputes going on. Yeah, you've mentioned also to me the unwritten rules of like, you know, somebody calls you a bitch. You've got to do something. Oh, that's a word. Yeah, you don't use that word. I don't know. You no, know, if somebody calls you a bitch, you have to do something where people are like, man, you're just going to take that? Maybe you are. <laughs> that's something I really don't want to get tied up in. Let's have him go out there and call somebody a bitch. <laughs> Let's have him go out there and call somebody a bitch. Look, first off, what the hell's on dude's lip? I don't know, man. It looks like he got popped a couple times and put some tissue on it like a bad shave job. No, but seriously, this is a major topic here, okay? Calling someone a bitch in jail is by far definitely fighting words. Anytime someone calls someone that, you better be ready for a show. Chances are they're going to be getting down. Because like you heard Ryan said, if you don't, you're going to look very weak. But look, there's a tactic to this. Trust me. I've done it. And you know, it's, it's a way to where you ain't got to fight. At the same time, you're not looking weak. It's a mental test. Look, that's what prison and jail is all about. If you can finagle these guys' minds, man, you can bob and weave many situations. Talk game is what I like to call it. Have go out there and call somebody. Go out there and just set up. That'd be an awful idea. Yeah. Yeah. 
An argument has arisen between inmate Treshawn and Ryan's cellmate Garza. So the argument's behind tennis shoes, believe it or not. Treshawn's trying to sell a pair. Garza went over to the cell to check them out. He says, man, they're not worth the amount of money that you're trying to sell them for. And Treshawn says, well, get the fuck out my cell then, bitch. Get out of here. Right? Very disrespectful. And like we've already broken down, those are fighting words. The guy said it loud enough for other people to hear it. You've seen the guys in the pod turn their head. They know that something's about to go down. Garza returns to this cell he shares with Ryan. You would think that it's over because he walked back to his cell, but Trey Sean keeps running his mouth. First of all, he called him a bitch, and second of all, while he's walking away, he says, you ain't gonna fight. That was probably the tipping point for Garza. That's really some words to make you look super soft if you don't end up fighting. I'm not over here trying to tell y'all to go square up and do what you gotta do. I'm just letting you know how it goes from what I've seen. Now look, this is where the finagling comes into play. Test your waters. He wants to yell out calling you a bitch in front of everybody. Yell it and call him one too. If he doesn't fight, then both y'all are just looking like y'all are arguing, calling each other names. But some people, they don't even rebuttal with words. They just strap up their shoes and go handle the situation because that's what they think. That's the lockup mentality. Or like they said in the beginning, unspoken rules of conduct behind bars. But if you call them one back, then it's opening up a whole nother scenario. And nobody's going to look at anybody weak because they're both calling each other the same thing. It might sound risky, but the risk is already there when he initiated by calling you all these names and saying you ain't going to fight. I would have said you're a bitch and you ain't going to fight. You want some? Come on down here then. I got something waiting for you too, buddy. You better be ready. You know, bluff the shit out of him or something. I don't know. Maybe he'll come in there with something as well. You know, it, it could go either way. All that extra stuff is up to you. You know what I mean? But it definitely looks better too if the uh, staff ends up finding out about the fight and they see him coming into your cell. Even though both y'all are going to the side pocket. Regardless of who started it, man, 99% of the time you get into a fight, both y'all are going to the hole. Of course, the enforcer, the person who started it, whatever, he might get a little more time than you, but y'all are both leaving. That's a fact. And a lot of people, they don't want to get caught because they don't want to get their phone privileges taken or their food, commissary, or visitation. But Garza decide not to run his mouth back, and he's just going to go straight into the cell like a bull and handle it. Caught him it again. That's go time. You see a cat walking straight to a cell, pop the top, man. Better be ready for a pay-per-view show. Look at this guy right here. He's definitely ready to watch that puppy go down. And this dude right here, I believe, is a cellmate of Trey Sean. So he's going to kind of like act as a buffer. I don't know if that's the right word or not, but he kind of keeps the balance between the fight. It seems like he helps Trey Sean quite a bit, but either way, chances are if you got cellmates, you know, they, they usually try to look out for you. Make sure you don't get dusted off or killed in there. And they'll make sure that no one jumps in. Or it could go the complete opposite. Garza went into this guy's cell. That's opening up the opportunity. You can't trust anybody in lockup, right? So he's opening up the opportunity to get jumped in there. Not only by Trey Sean, but every one of his cellmates as well. So it's a risky move. But he felt the need to go ahead and handle it like that. And I don't show fights. You know, I'm going to blur it out. But I don't show fights. If you want to watch the full fight, however they show it, you can go ahead and click the link pinned in the comment section below. The original video will be there. All right, so uh, first and foremost, did you hear those sounds? They're very eerie, right? Well, it's even more eerie when you hear the, you're on lockdown or something and you can hear the cellmates fighting for like three or four minutes, man, going at it. Then they stop. Next thing you know, and about 30 minutes later, they're going at it again. 
on and off, on and off. You know that they are going to town, rumbling in that cell, man. You don't know if someone's going to be dead or not when they pop the doors. So it's very eerie, especially when people start screaming for help or they start saying, all right, man, all right, all right. But you still hear it. By the time those doors do pop, he probably has a few broken bones and no teeth left. I told a story before, man, about a guy that I seen in prison get beat unrecognizable. It was, it was I, I still will never forget uh, that view. I will never forget it. A couple guys actually got beat like that, but this one was, was beyond a beating. You know what I mean? It was like he was trying to kill him. Either way, check out Ryan here on the top rack. Let's pay close attention to his socks. No shoes on. None of these guys are prepared for battle or anything. This is uh, <laughs> guards and cellmates. They're just posted up, listening, waiting for it to be said and done. Some of those guys are still in the bed, look like they're reading. I've been in cells where if my cellmate went to go fight, we're all ready. That's how close we were in there, you know, if things spilled over into our cell or something like that. Or I've been in situations where I was playing cards with my buddy, and next thing you know, he gets in a fight with someone, and he starts getting punished. I saved his damn life. I decided to get up out the rack and put myself into it. Start rocking dude in the back of the head. I know one-on-ones is how it's supposed to be, but when you're close to someone, you knew him from the streets. You ain't gonna let him go out like that. Especially when the guy's three times the size of him. That's what the situation was. So it was a pretty scary situation for me as well, even though I wasn't the one getting beat up at the moment. Just by putting myself into the equation, that guy could have turned and ended up beating me up as well. But that's not... What happened? He actually dipped up out the cell screaming, I'm getting jumped, right? I'll never forget it, but I saved my buddy's life that day, man, if you were to ask me. And not to mention the guy that I knew from the streets, he was a rumbler, man. His whole family was well known. They're like kind of like bullies, I guess you could say. Not really bullies, but look, if you mess with them, man, they're going to punish you. So as you can see, like I said, homeboy's acting as a buffer. He's pushing Treshawn back as Garza's leaving the cell. Believe it or not, especially in prison, you ain't gonna have individuals that that that's gonna stop or separate people at all. Um, come on, Keep you beat you me up. I'm sad. All right, so uh, Garz is doing something here that I don't think you should do. If you just got into a fight, understand, even if you won, man, you ain't got to walk away talking shit because who knows? A homeboy could get really, really salty from that, man. Especially how he said, I'll beat your ass every day. He could go back in that cell, get a piece of steel, and take that man's life. Out of pure anger and rage, and now he's doing life in prison. Trust me, it happens all the time. But look at the uh, environment here. All right, everybody's peeking on every angle. We got guys out here. What's going on? Got guys right here. Oh, damn. Got guys right here. Oh, whoa. I can't see nothing, but I can hear the juice. It's all eyes on that cell. And typically, if there's a correctional officer in the booth watching everything unfold, man, they're going to know something's up because everybody's staring. And that's the number one rule, man, that I just couldn't help but to break. Whenever a fight jumped off, man, you're supposed to get the hell out of there. Don't look at nothing. Just, you know, mind your business. Me, <laughs> where's the honey bond, bro? I need to watch this money. <laughs> I couldn't help it, man. Just like in prison, man. I couldn't help looking into people's cells. So just mind your business and not look at the situation, even as hard as it might be. Also, you know, these guys are actually handling this fight kind of properly, believe it or not, for a jail standpoint. Like I said in the beginning, some of these situations could end up with a person becoming or looking like a snitch without them even knowing. A lot of guys, they'll get really loud, man, start screaming and get rah-rah all over the place. And next thing you know, the CO hears it. He's alerted. Now, guess what? You're looking like you took the easy way out. Or let's say you got beat up, you know, and you don't decide to just sit in your cell and clean everything up. You decide to come out all bloodied screaming. If the COs see it, lock it down and take both y'all out. That's pretty much like, hey, bro, you, you just did that on purpose so you could get out the block. And not only that, you took someone else with you. You're pretty much like a snitch now. Not really, but kind of, if it makes sense. There's all kinds of protocol or ways to handle these situations to the point where even if you lose in the winter, both of y'all go away walking off respectfully or without your uh, lockup career being tarnished, I guess you could say. 
But Treshawn's going back to his cell. He said, all right, I don't know why he's going back to his cell. He does have uh, some slides on, so maybe he's going to get some shoes. Possibly the shoes that he was trying to sell Garza. Yeah. Come on, try to grab me. Pull him off and then let him swim on Yeah. Come on back down here, man. Oh, oh, no, come on. Come on, bro. Wow. All right. So Treshawn said, Come on back down here. Garza said, Nah, I ain't coming down there, man. Look at my hand. Look, as soon as Treshawn, this is something that you don't really see too much. Treshawn says, What's up now? Come on, because Garza didn't go back down there. He brought the fight back to him. And Garza, if you're to ask me, he's kind of cop and please, but at the same time, I think it's just because he don't he don't want to fight no more, man. He handled the situation, but at the same time, he should never ran his mouth when he walked out the cell. The rage is built up in Treshawn. He's got to prove a point now. But Garza's saying, look, man, my hand's broken, man. Let's just pretty much, let's just dead this right here, man. You know, it's all over. Treshawn says, hell no, nah, man. Let's go. Come on. Come on, bro. bro, listen, you ain't gonna sit there and run now this is probably the biggest mistake that Garza made other than running his mouth when he comes out the cell. Treshawn comes back in for vengeance and he's over here still just talking to the guy when he's right in front of him. You know, there ain't no more talking at this point. But Garza still is trying to talk him down. He should have known better. Treshawn's gonna fire off on that money. <laughs> Now, look, I know a lot of y'all hate that I pause it, but this is what I do. Highly detailed breakdown and review of these clips. If you want to watch the full thing, like I said, go to the link pinned in the comment section below. But look, Ryan on the top rack is doing something that, you know, you need to be careful to do. He's putting on his shoes. And in a lot of situations, actually, you know what? I've seen a couple of them in action where fights came into the cell and someone came into the cell that was a friend of the enemy that came in sees that the other cellmates popping on their shoes like Ryan's doing right here. Look, once you pop them things on, people are going to think that you're trying to be a part of the equation too, that you might want to get a little something in. I've seen guys say, bro, what are you putting your shoes on for? Why are you doing that? Hop off that rack and see what happens, right? When really like Ryan, he's probably just putting on his shoes to make sure, you know, if anything comes his way, he's prepared. You got to be very careful. Now we got Treshawn's friend D makes his way into the cell. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Let him go. Don't have him swim with D. So D is Treshawn's friend, acting as the buffer once again. He says, come on, man, let him go. Garza says, don't let him swing on me, D. So I'm guessing Garza probably got him in a mean headlock, right? And it could be pretty much a stalemate at that point, man. I've seen people lay on the ground in headlocks for like five minutes straight, man. You know, one person don't want to let him go. And the other person, you know, he's like, as soon as you let me go, man, it's game over. But D don't like that, man. He's going to make sure his homeboy don't get choked out or something crazy. So he's going to come and stop the situation a bit again. Now Ryan happens to be, I believe if I remember correctly, uh, or he used to be, a medic for the Navy Reserve. I apologize, bro, if that ain't right. Army Reserve, I don't know which one it was. I can't remember, but he's a, he used to be a medic, so he knows what he's doing. And Garza broke his hand. I'm not going to show him trying to reset his hand and all that, but Ryan goes into detail saying, look, your knuckle was pushed all the way back. Let me do what I can do. He grabs his hand, pushes it up, but look at my knuckles. It's almost exactly like how he broke it down in this clip. I broke my hand numerous times. You see this middle knuckle? See how it's pointy? That, that's, my, that's my bad hand, the right hand. This is my haymaker. Look at the knuckle on that one. It's pushed all the way back. I can feel the knuckle. It's actually right here. There's no point to it. It's actually level between the others. That knuckle is just bulging right out. So Ryan actually saved this guy a little bit of deformation from his hand by fixing the knuckle the best that he could. You know, I actually had someone try to do it for me. They were just they were just pulling my middle finger as hard as they could. It didn't do nothing. There's a certain technique to do it, and 
mine didn't so it just healed the way it is but some people say you know just let it heal the way it is and it becomes harder and i can honestly say i can punch some things as hard as i can with this hand and sometimes not even barely feel it if i were to do it with this hand i feel every bit of it but that's a bulk of it ladies and gentlemen you know uh uh, Trey Sean and Garza, they pretty much handled it, you know, exactly how most inmates do. What you've seen today is how a lot of disputes usually end, except for the fact that sometimes people get hurt a lot more than what you've seen today. Once again, if you are new to the channel and enjoyed, hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave, and stay tuned. I got plenty more content coming your way. I think I'm going to do a couple more uh these 60 days in within the next few days or so. I think we're going to hit the females block. But I don't know if we're ready just yet for the women's pod. You know, you got to you gotta build your courage up. But anyways, as always, until the next time, y'all be easy, be safe, and more importantly than anything, stay free.